the different manufacturers, all the major speaker manufacturers, mm -hmm. use different prediction software so you can decide whereabouts you can hand the speakers. Because obviously we've got lots of different speakers pointing in different directions. So to uh, design the line array, um, we put in the dimensions of the venue. So we put in Brixton Academy, it's the stage is this far away from the back wall, there's a balcony there, measure the height, and then uh, it chooses whereabouts we're going to hang the speakers, and we can predict um, uh, how much sound pressure there's going to be uh, at the different places. So we try and get an even dispersion along the whole building. Um, once we've actually got the uh, speakers in the air, we then use a different set of sound uh, software. We use something like, either, I use SpectraFoo, Rob, who's worked with me today, uses Smart, um, Smart Live and we use that to make time measurements between the different systems. So basically all the speakers are moving forward at the same time. So we align the subs to the uh, tops and we align, today we're aligning the delay system that we got for the balcony to the main system, all from one single point on the stage. So we kind of decide an imaginary point in the middle of the stage and we delay everything from that. So it all makes a magnificently fluid sound all coming out from the beginning and spreading out and covering the entire area. So yeah, we do use quite a lot of software, mainly two, two types of program. Prediction software to decide um, where we're going to put the speakers and then analysis software to decide um, if it's all time arriving. And we can check out the phase of the different speakers so we can align the phase of uh, the subs to the uh, main hang. <coughs> yeah, quite complex software. I, I'm not very good at it to be honest. I tend to use Rob's. Rob does it every day and I just let him do it. Uh, which yeah, so your analysis of software is another person. <coughs> My analysis of the software is, uh, does it sound right to me? Yeah. Which is just as valid a point, uh, but he can actually tell me why it sounds rubbish. Or great. I guess, in the, you know, until recently you didn't have these predictive no, software, <coughs> so you'd had to do it purely by ear, really. Yeah, especially with, the thing is, uh, in, the old, in olden days, before <laughs> digital revolution, um, you couldn't actually make the minute time delays uh, mm. that you can now. So it was a lot more difficult to align the subs. There's a famous story of like the first time they delayed speakers to cover a festival. They were using tape machines to make the delay and moving. They actually moved the speakers to the right amount of time that the tape could do, <laughs> so that so to get it all in time. But nowadays it's uh, <coughs> it's a lot easier. Uh, and in fact, it's in the amplifiers. You actually you can change it all in the amplifiers, and it's all it's all a lot easier, and you can do it a lot more accurately. Um, I never do my own predictions. I never do fly my own PA because um, if you do it yourself, you tend to get a conflict of interest. Because I'm kind of naturally lazy, and I'll just kind of go the easiest way, which isn't always the best way for an engineer. You know, you kind of go, well, if we fly it that way, we could probably get away with six boxes and well, and the extra work of eight. And mm -hmm. and if I've got someone working for me, I can kind of, they can kind of go with that, and they'll go, oh, I really, really should do eight boxes, and they'll go, oh, well, we can get away with six. Yeah, it'd be much better. It will mm -hmm. sound better with eight, and I can kind of force things on. Whereas if it's myself, it, I, I think you do find you tend to go the easy route rather than, yeah. it's good, to, I, I like to have someone I can sort of uh, argue with really about how <laughs> we're going to do it, um, you know, oh, do, why are we doing it like that? Well, because you can't do it like that, John, you know, you can't get that many boxes. Are you sure? Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Well, maybe we can get one more. All right, yeah, well, we'll get one more box in, you know, yeah. that kind of argument, which is it's good. And it's because my, my primary consideration is the band's interest. I'm working for the band to do sound for the band. I'm not working for the PA company. My yeah. job is not just to put speakers in, my job is to get the best sound out of the speakers for the band. Um, so it's good to have someone to sort of uh, work with. Yeah. And I suppose you've got people who specialise in just getting yeah, things up in the right place and doing the predictions and understanding that side of it, while you specialise in actually mixing the Yeah, shows. and flying PA does seem to involve motors, and if anyone knows about me, they'll know that me and motors just don't go very well. Me and mechanical <laughs> objects of that kind. Uh, so I never got involved, I, I, like, I know the science and I've done all the training courses. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand the science, uh, but the nuts and bolts of putting it together is a bit like fixing cars to me. It's like an yeah, anathema. Leave it to someone who knows. Yeah, so people are actually interested in this stuff, so I tend to like to use them to do the, yeah. the stuff. And there's a couple of guys that I work with on a regular basis. Um, do you get to choose easy. who comes along with you, or do you? Uh, if I'm, like, if I'm on a long tour, you, if I'm on a long tour, I, I basically I've got a couple of guys that I cherry pick. Um, yeah who I like to work with, a um, guy like Sid Rogerson, I've worked with him for like about 10 years now, and we have an understanding, he kind of knows what I want out of the system. Uh, today I've got Rob Priddle, who's a really good guy, um, he works for the same company, 
and came highly recommended. But basically, any of the guys that I use from that company, I pretty much know they're going to be of a standard. Yeah. Um, but if I was doing a longer tour, this is just a one-off. I can either go, I must have this person for this one show at Brixton. You know, drag him off that four-week tour he's doing just to do my one show. In this rack here, we've got the control for the system. If you spin over here, we can see a sort of graphic representation. Hopefully you can catch that of uh, all the different speakers. So here, these are the amplifiers that are running the stage uh, left PA, front of house right. Up here is the amplifiers that are running the PA up there for the balcony. And the ones on the floor are running the subs. And then these little ones are running some little speakers which you can't see very well here, which are going to be at the front of the stage, just from the very front row of the audience. Come a bit closer to the bar, you see that once you get here, we're fine here, but if I go a bit further forward, um, I'm going to move out of the area that the main PA is going to be covering, because it kind of covers like this. There's a big section about here that's not covered. So we've got to cover what we call lip fills here. It's just going to infill for the first couple of rows. And then I've got another one just there that's covering this kind of area. And then, because <clears throat> this doesn't really cover this bit here, I've got another two on a case over there, which are going to kind of splurge up that bit. Because these are really important to me, actually. These are probably some of the most important speakers, because the people who stand here are the people who are real fans of the band, and they're the people who queued up to get tickets, were the first people to buy tickets, they've got all the records, um, they queue up afterwards to get the band's signatures, they love the music, and it's really important that I cover these people as well as the people who are generally standing around here. So what we're also doing is we're making the levels so that it's the right kind of level compared to the main PA, and also that it's in time. Well, not actually in time. I get it so it's slightly behind, so you can get the clarity it doesn't appear to be coming from a little tiny box because it's kind of, I find it a bit disconcerting to come to a really big gig like this and then just listen to one little box. So you can hear the sound from all around, but th that box is giving the clarity. I'm using something called the Hass effect, which is uh, where the sound where you first hear it coming from is where you perceive it to come from. But we can still use the clarity from these boxes to make it comprehensible. It doesn't sound like it's coming from the little box, in theory. Hopefully it will work. Uh, it usually does, and so we're just checking that, and so me and Rob's, Rob's got a little tablet, uh, wireless, and we're just uh, changing the delay slightly on each of these speakers, and changing the level so that these aren't blasting out too much. So hopefully you can hear the vocal all the way across the front and sing along with the words, which is the important bit. <laughs>